Hello everybody and welcome to The Wandering Village. Now this is a new game from the makers of Niche, Strayforn Studios. So thank you very much for the key and for allowing me to have a little look at this game ahead of a schedule. So uh, let's jump in and start a new game. She Lab Safe File. And I am going to play it on Adept. Hopefully that means everyone won't immediately die or anything, but uh, I had a little go on novice and there is no way to play on a novice difficulty without having the tutorial and the tutorial um kind of i feel slows me down at getting the, the game started so we'll see how i do on adept driven from our homes by the toxic spores we kept wandering looking for shelter but not in our wildest dreams did we imagine what we would find It's an Onbu. <laughs> Hello, Onbu. Onbu is adorable and majestic and amazing. And we live on its back. So, I have all of these people who I have to look after now. We have 16 of them. And we can put farms on the green patches and uh, anything else we want really on the the brown patches on Ombu's back um well you can put anything anywhere you like really but I don't know farms and things won't grow very well just on the brown dirt there and as far as I can tell there's no way of changing it so if you have an Ombu that spawns it's always random and you don't like the look of the map you've been given I would say to give it a reload because uh, that can make a big difference to be honest so the first thing I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to uh, the harvest tool. In fact, I'm going to bring up the build menu just so that I've got it visible. And I'm going to harvest these trees. Now, the harvest tool is quite cool because you can harvest specific things. So you can specifically harvest trees, rocks or crops. And you can specifically harvest everything. Right, or just fully grown so you can do harvest all harvest crops harvest tree harvest rock you can toggle on harvest fully grown or not fully grown so i i probably would only do fully grown things and at the moment i just want to get rid of these trees and i want to get rid of them so that a i've got some building materials and b so that i can maybe um more easily throw in a berry gathering hut there and once I know where the berry gathering hut is going to go that gives me more of a framework for the rest of uh, what I'm going to do with the village so we shall see so I'm just going to let them go and do that first so off they go and I'm just going to let them do that a little bit faster in the meantime Ombu is having a sleep and the game always seems to start with Ombu having a sleep so that is the way that goes. So they've chopped all of those down. And so I now want to have a little look at uh, making them a berry gatherer so that they can have some food. Now where you place this is important because the efficiency changes based on where it is. And it looks to me like 71 is about the best efficiency I'm going to get there. So boop, there it goes. Then. What I usually do, what I usually do, not that I've played this that many times, one, two, three, four, is I pop a little bit of road down, two, three, four, five, just to mark the edges of where the, the berry bush where the berry bush farm goes in four, five. Just where I want it to go there. So if we have a quick look, you can see those white dots. They are where all of the berry bushes um, matter to the building. So that's where we want them to grow. And we don't really want uh, to be building anything else in that area. So it's going to sort of... And luckily it doesn't interfere with any of these spikes. These spikes can be harvested. But every time you do, it's kind of like, I don't know, plucking out a hair or something, I guess. Ombu gets a bit annoyed because, you know, it, it kind of hurts. It's kind of like 
pulling something out of of uh, of Ombu, which isn't very nice. So we try not to do that if we can if we can help it. If we can't help it though, then we'll pull, we will pull them out if we need the space. There are other ways to raise Ombu's trust by uh, sort of feeding and doctoring and looking after. So there's no necessary reason to uh, to worry about pulling them out, but you might not want to do that immediately. Okay, so now we know where the berry farm is going to be. I kind of want to make a, an area for us to make living quarters and all that sort of thing. I'm just going to expand the road out a little bit. And I know it's a slight waste of... Uh, that looks awfully not like a square. I, I've done it right, haven't I? Yeah, I have. Okay, fine. And any berries that we pick up on the way can just be used for other things. So we've got this lovely um, patch of dirt over here. Which I figure would be a really good place to like start building homes and things like that. So I like to build the homes kind of out of the way. Probably about here. And starting off with about eight of them is a really good idea. Because you've got 16 people and each of these huts will supply two villagers. So... A little two-man tents, basically. Right, so now we've got food and living arrangements kind of sorted. We're going to need something to build them with. So I'm going to need to work out kind of where I want to take down trees. Now, the obvious place would be here. And probably those three trees up there as well. So again, we're going to go with just fully grown. And we're just going to go with trees. And I'm just going to take those ones down. We've got 48 logs and 30 stone already. I think we started possibly with a little bit. Um, so we're also, we are going to need more stone. And I really do feel that uh, this area here is going to be a place to get rid of all the stone. There we are. Let's go. Let's start harvesting those and building, building our tent. So they're getting on with that fairly fast. It only requires five wood. So that's brilliant. They are on four times speed though. And then it looks like they are getting on really fast with the berry gatherer. And the road though. I'm going to prioritise the berry gatherer. I want them to try and work on that if they can. They've run out of wood though so they may want to work on the road before they cut down more wood before they build the berry gatherer but that's just... That's just life, really. Ombu still sleeping, so that's fine. It looks like we're in a cold biome at the moment. It looks like there's a, a rest spot ahead. That's an Ombu sleep spot. A cold snap ahead. And then there are also nomads ahead as well. So we might be able to pick up some new people for the village there. But that will be later on, obviously. Oh good, they're getting on with clearing up the, the rock and everything. They do really need, actually, somewhere to put all this stuff that they're picking up. So this is the storage tab. So we've got village, storage, food, raw resources. So that's uh, quarries and things like that. Stone, cutter carpenter, so right, refining. Food for ombu. Things to interact with ombu. Then you've got poison, and that's actually like medicine and things like that. Oh, I should slow this right down. Because they have finished. So now I'm going to put a third person in that berry farm. I'm going to be able to do things with berries. So the next thing that I want to do for them um, is probably probably going to have to have a farm like over here or something, I think. Or go upwards. I'm not sure. There's not very many really good good places to put a farm here without taking out ombu spikes which I really don't want to do so I know I'm obsessed with roads but it's just my life it's just how I do I'll put some roads there the reason that I'm saying this is I need to know where I want to put all of my water resources and I want them to be close to the berry, well, not to the berry farm necessarily, but close to the farm. 
So the other thing I need to do is to put something in to store all the stuff. It's coming out of the berry farm. So I'm going to put that there. Then I'm going to work on some water. And the water is actually under food. It's uh Oh no! No, 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 no. Uh-uh. How come that was in such a... It's on top of my road. It's not on. The road is everything. Okay, so hopefully they'll just take that down there and start on it. So yes, I need to make... Oh, I think Ombu's waking up. Oh, up you get. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so Ombu's going to start walking. Eventually we'll hit that cold snap. And then eventually we'll hit the other villagers as well. The other the nomads. Okay, we'll repair that road where I so badly broke it. So we're nearly done on the pantry. That's great. So then I, what was I saying? I was then going to make air wells. These um, make water. Which I can then store... In a water tank so we'll put the water tank there and uh, I, I leave spaces between other things but water tanks they tend to just put together but I don't know they look nice like that and then I think there'll be room for farming and things up here so let's have a look at the farm I feel like we really need a farm and that's only wood and stone as well the wood has run out, so how about if we're going to put a farm up here, we take the trees from up here. And then the farm, let's get it as close, I would say, probably do need to have it about there, don't we? But that's okay. And again, the road. Oh no, that's completely wrong. Just to signify where where I can and can't build. Obviously the road down there has been designed to be at the bottom. And it seems to be about there. And then I'll just use the tree stump as the the rightmost border for now. And that'll be a good way for them to get to the farm. Okay, wonderful and beautiful. I am very happy with this. Oh yeah, the next thing I need to I need to make for them. I'm gonna put it just next to their houses because that's kind of out of the way. It's also on dirt, which means I'm not using my precious, precious grassland. Or which is meant for my farms. So a research building. Was there anything else we wanted? Maybe a worker post. could maybe go somewhere like here lovely oh the place is un oh, unaffected by poison phew oh yeah I'm be found somewhere to sleep okay have another sleep that sounds good and it looks like we are again out of wood we still have a few trees sort of lined up for cutting down but I'm gonna well make sure it's on tree only for now we may want to take down some berry bushes but at the moment we seem to be doing reasonably okay for food thanks to how well off that berry farm is you don't always find one that's 71% that's actually really good it will get more efficient over time provided we don't let anything happen and in fact that's why we're gonna take away all the trees and berry bushes that are close by 
And that includes these little ones here. The reason I'm going to take these away is that I don't want any um, I don't want any poison getting into these plants and growing into my berry bushes down there if I can help it. Because sometimes you get poison events and the uh, poison, poisonous, poisonous plants uh, show up and if they get into say the tree here they might spread over here get into the berry bushes but if I sort of make almost a fire break that kind of helps that not to happen. So that's why I, I do like to try and keep my farms and my berry bushes a little bit apart as well but that's not always possible. I'll probably start farm. I will start the farm up here. <laughs> that way, at least if one thing gets poisoned, the other things don't. We have a chance of surviving. Okay, the farm is on its way. It's got all of its uh, its components in it, and it's ready. Okay, it looks like the berry gatherer is struggling for space. Ah, okay. So maybe we should pop in another pantry. So I think what we'll do is we'll put a road in maybe about here. And then I'll put another pantry in maybe down here. Maybe about there. So that we can have double the amount of food because at the moment it's all berries. Um, and they're all over the place. Maybe I could actually even have two pantries there. Doesn't hurt to save things up. I don't know whether things perish on the ground. It does, I don't see any sort of perish, um, statistic or anything like that. So I probably don't necessarily need that many pantries, but it'd be nice to have. We've got a lot of things waiting on wood being cut down, seemingly. And they're just not, uh, they're not doing it. So what's everyone doing? There's five of them employed and there's 11 of them idling. So I think it's important probably to get this worker post done so I can tell them to get moving. Okay, I'm going to make them a kitchen next. But this is a chance to actually show you the research tree. So this is the research tree and uh, it has a kitchen, scavenger hut, food stand, all little things for the village. This side over here is uh, crop based, so it's all the different crops, uh, leading on to eventually bread making technology. Okay, we've got decontaminators, we've got better housing, all that sort of thing. This one is how to get resources off of uh, Onbu, so sawmills, quarries, tree nurseries, ways to make more trees ways to get uh, to work on iron, quarrying, all that sort of thing. A deep quarry, quarry produces stone by drilling deep into Ombu's back. This process will hurt Ombu's trust in you. So again, it's another thing where you've got to sort of um, really work on Ombu's trust because Ombu won't go, won't do what you tell Ombu to do <laughs> unless Ombu trusts you. So if it doesn't feel like you're, you're trustworthy, it won't it won't do your commands. I'll show you that in a minute because we're going to get the uh, horn blower research soon. We'll do the kitchen first though. And uh, they are doing a good job getting on with that. We haven't gone too far yet. We're about to come across our first set of villagers. Uh, of nomads, sorry. But it does look like we're struggling a little bit for food. However, that's about to change. Because we have just made our first farm. So, like I said, we're going to farm up there and they'll start farming some beets for me. If I can pick up some more dudes, then I'll stick some more dudes on the farm as well. Oh, it does look like they're getting on with various tasks now. They're off picking up wood and chopping down trees. Very nice. A lot of them are making the roads, and I, I know that holds them up, but I can't, I just, in my head, I can't plan the village without 
having at least a certain amount of roads in there so that I can not be sticking a building right there next to the berry. Oh no, the berry farm is all ruined. Because that's exactly the sort of thing I would do. Yeah, just waiting for wood. I'm not sure whether to maybe pop the speed up a touch. It looks like the food's going down really hard now. That's not good. so hard we are we are in a cold weather environment but there's three people working on berries there's two people working on farming beets it shouldn't be like going down that hard oh i know did we just go through that cold spot we did that would probably really affected it probably affected the berry growth as well okay that's fine oops wasn't what i meant to do let's go to the map so we're about to hit some more dudes. Uh, it looks like food is stable. But if I pick these up, then, and they are healthy, lovely, three healthy people, and that could be three extra farmers. Let's put two of them into farm and one can do building and wood gathering and all that sort of thing. Okay, looks like they've gone through all the trees that I asked them to, so let's just cut down these ones. I think that would be useful. Those two as well. And maybe that one. Anything that looks like it might be in the way of somewhere where I'm likely to build, I think, should go first. Water tank constructed, pantry. They're getting on with it now. Lovely. We want lots of water tanks because these ones are already filling up you see so every time one gets built i'll maybe add like another one into the queue but we are like at zero for stone zero for wood we're really struggling with that so again let's just take away all these stones i would say and where do i want to take trees from maybe the top here I'll probably want to build things around here eventually, so... That stump's so annoying. That would be such a good place for a second farm. But I'll probably end up having to put it, like, here or something. I'll probably be in a really odd space. I do find that the far where I can put the farms and things really does shape the village, and I have to sort of be a bit, like, creative about the ways around it. Okay, so we've just got two more things to build. We need a little bit of stone for each. The wood is doing okay now, and the stone is doing badly. It keeps changing, doesn't it? And that, uh, that, is it the kitchen? Yeah, the kitchen is getting there. So as soon as we get that, I'll pop it down, maybe next to one of the pantries or something. Maybe down here. And we shall get... Uh, how, how are the pantries doing? So we've got 44 berries in there, 50 berries in there. The berries apparently are doing great. Uh, the farming, not so great yet. But we'll give them time, you know. They've only just started. The the berries also, sorry, the, the beets that are growing uh, are only at 60% growth rate and that's because we're in a cold biome at the moment. If we were in one of these nice tasty green biomes then they would grow a lot faster oh and there's some ombu food coming up nom all oh, right then so kitchen nearly done and then i think we'll get them a doctor i think that might be important 
it's always a bit of a toss up. The scavengers are great because they can get you extra resources, which you maybe need. Um, but the doctor is also really quite badly needed too. So for the doctor, I am going to need a herbalist first. I know this because I have played before. So I'm going to maybe put the herbalist just above the farm here. Maybe like about there. Because I don't find with the herbalist that I tend to need all of the land I'm given. Whereas with the farm, I'm fairly certain that I will. And then I'm going to continue the roads out to here. So we're working on the doctors at the moment. Lovely. They're doing well. The food's going up. The food's in a positive at the moment despite being in a cold biome. And that's what we want. We want to be able, even at 60% growth rates for things, to stay stable with the population we have before we take any more on. But I would ideally like to take on population every time I can because that's the way that we can grow. So there's always a bit of a balancing act to be done there. I would say. But what I'd eventually like to do is to start getting a bit more space in. So um, getting the sawmill will be important for that. But that's uh, I need knowledge points for that and knowledge points require a scavenger hut. So. Where have I looked there? So if I put a farm, maybe I could put a farm, a second one. Because a second farm will be really useful. I'll add another worker. I, I, what I tend to, to look at is, are they using all of the plots they've got? If they are, if every single one of them is full, then I need another... I need more plots. If they're not, then I need more workers probably need more workers anyway i need more people because when you start doing things like you need one person to go in the herbalist hut you need one person to be a doctor you need one person for this and that and the other so at the moment they're all quite happy uh we don't have enough housing and that is the only thing that's an issue for them at all at the moment which is brilliant so we need two extra huts. But I will start gathering herbs just because in the future, um, I'd rather have, that's something you need to have before you need it. You know, you need it to be there when you need it. So let's get some plots. Out here for the herbalist. Herbalist can go and just do a little bit of uh, farming there. Lovely. They're still just cutting down this forest over here. I'm quite happy to, to leave the forest alone down there and just build where I'm building. And I'm thinking... The road here would probably go just up to the spines, really. And I could maybe just leave the spines in their own at all enclosed bit. There are spines there, right where I want to build, though. So they might be the first ones that to go, you know? But only once I've built all around them. And decide I need more space. So we don't want to annoy Ombu until we absolutely have to. Poor little dude. Not little. <laughs> massive. Poor massive beast. Doesn't really sound the same, does it? Okay, so we've got our worker post. Got a farm. We're making just about enough food. It is a bit worrying. So I think everybody else who comes in now is going to uh, need to be working on food production. With the exception of the village. The village doctor, though, I will wait and see. Um... You can see the air toxicity. You can see the toxicity on Ombu. Because it's always poison that, that they're needed for. And you can see in the population details. If anybody's unhappy. So if they're 100% happy that's fine. 
if they're poisoned, they'll be a bit unhappy about being poisoned. If they don't have enough housing, they'll be unhappy about that. So it's really good to see. Click on there and make sure they're at 100%. Now then. Hornblower or scavenger hut. That's a tough one. I think I'm going to go with the hornblower. Because as much as I can get extra stuff with the scavenger hut. Oh, we carried... Oh, 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 we carried on. We could have gone into the lovely green lush biome, but no. Because we didn't have a hornblower and Ombu doesn't trust us enough to tell him to... to, to, to Choose a direction. <sighs> now we have to carry on in the cold. Lovely. And there's a cold snap coming up. If we had a hornblower, we could tell Ombu to run through the cold snap. Instead, we have to just deal. We'll have some more people soon, hopefully. As I can see them coming up on the on the map ahead. I could also try, once we have the scavenger hut, if we're not all the way up here by then, and go to some of these little villages and get more villagers up there. But obviously, more villagers means more f more food needed to be produced, but if I'm usually a villager that's brought in purely to make food, we'll make more than, than they need to. So I want to see about making a kitchen. I don't know whether I need more people first. Oh, night night, Ombu. Oh, not on the cold snap. Oh, man. You have no sense of timing, Ombu. At all. But we're just about making enough food right now with the berry farm and everything. Berry farm started off on 71. It's now 76% efficient. And that's because some of these uh, berry bushes have reproduced now. So hopefully, eventually, we can get that up to like 100% efficiency, which would be amazing. I am wondering whether we need a second berry farm. You see, a kitchen... Now, something that, that is worth mentioning, definitely, a kitchen will give better quality foods. I don't necessarily know whether they are more satiating foods. They'll make the people happier, yes. But I'm not sure whether they are more efficient than just having berries. And obviously, if you've got to have somebody dedicated to working in a kitchen, you would want it to be more efficient. So I'm not sure, because... I'd have to see how many how many things are being made in the kitchen, like um, when it's making like uh, refined foods, whether it makes more. I think that would be a thing. But you can sometimes overexert yourself a little bit with it. So what I will do is I'm going to build all the buildings ahead of time. Oh, I think I'm, I think the problem is I'm going to need a carpenter and a stone cutter soon. And part of me doesn't want to make them. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's going to be so... Right, fine. I will make them. I'll put them by the worker hut. Out there. But that means another two people have to be dedicated to not making food and making, um, like wooden boards and stone and cut stone so it becomes a bit of a balancing act it's like I, I do need to make sure that my food is in a good positive before I can do that and I don't know where this road leads it could lead to starvation as far as I'm concerned we also sat right in a cold snap So this is why I'm researching the hornblower because of stuff like this. Because I could tell Ombu like to just get up now. If Ombu's only 50% sleepy, you can tell it to get up and move. And just get off that cold snap before it tries to sleep again. So that is a thing. But you know, we're fine. Despite being in a cold snap. We are still making positive food. 
so I'm all right with that. They're working on the carpenter. Lovely. We don't have any stone right now, so... Is there any stone to be had? There's still some down on this bottom bit here. But we don't have a ton of stone on this map at all. Or if we do, we've had a lot of it. So... Yeah, well, I'll start them. I'll start them working on this then. Get the the far away stone then, please. Not that though. No, 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 no. Not the ombu spike. I need to do a more specific uh, request there. I think. There's a couple of bits down here, actually. Maybe they'd be good ones to get first. Okay, so they're working on the stone cutter. The stone cutter has been done. Lovely. It looks like the... Did I ever build? No, it looks like they're, ha they're, they're having to go and just get stuff each time. So I haven't built any kind of like warehouse or storage for their materials, I don't think. So I think a good place to have that would be like up in around behind somewhere near. Uh, I just don't know quite where. I'm going to go with there, but it's just in behind the workers' huts. Uh, no, not the workers' huts, the, uh, the carpenter and the stone cutter. So someone did go uh, to work in there immediately, which is really good. They are going to try, I think, and mine the, <laughs> mine the stone. Oh, it looks like they are going to the ones down there, but that's fine. They're going to need to eventually. Uh, then we'll build the horn blower, and then we'll immediately build the scavenger's hut, and then I'll have to hope that these guys don't move. Please stay there until we get to you. Well, I really need people. Yeah, scavenger hut next. Absolutely needed. So needed. Now then, we built the herbalist. We did not build the doctor to go with the herbalist yet. And that is kind of important. Because if we come across any poison, that will be needed straight away. Uh, poison. Doctor. I was like forgetting where the doctor was then. Now, I need to give the herbalist enough space. So, about there. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five, six. And then I can put the doctor in next door. Uh, again, it's just separating out places where I believe they need to be left blank. So let's just put the doctor in there. The doctor will require planks and slabs as well, so actually it's probably a good thing that I did build the stone cutter and the carpenter. Because we're going to need them. So this this is where it really starts to get uh, more difficult, is where you've got to have two people working when you've got a tiny little, a really tiny little population. And you've got to have two whole people working just so that I can make new buildings. So it's a bit of a hump that when you start to have buildings that have to have these processed these processed things to make them work right so I do want a kitchen I'll put it next to my pantries
And I also really do want this horn blower. And you have to put it because it's the rules. <laughs> you have to put it quite close to Ombu's head. Can you see it's all the way across the uh, the shoulders there? And that's so Ombu can hear with Ombu's little, little, little ears. Uh, their little little ears are made of a root. Yes, so they can hear. Important. So there we are. So slowly getting the wooden planks and things in. Um, I think both of those are as important as each other. So I, I'll let them just do them both together. I think the kitchen is slightly less important because we're doing okay for food right now. I could even take on more peeps. Which hopefully is going to happen soon. Once I have the scavenger hut as well. Is the scavenger hut on its way? I think that's what's being researched now. Yeah. So it gives him a chance to do things. Uh, are we... Of course we are. Out of stone and wood. <laughs> Never have enough resources. Scavenger's hut will help with that. But I think I need to designate some trees to be cut down. So that one. And that one. Obviously. May as well go for that one. And then I'll start maybe on some ones around here. Again, trying to avoid on boost spines. Especially until we can feed and pet and things like that to try and offset those those feelings of hurt. I thought I'd taken those trees away. Maybe not. Still 76% efficiency on the berry farm, which is nice. I would love for the berries to be reproducing faster but they won't probably reproduce as quickly in a cold environment so and that is just a guess I don't know that but that's something that I would imagine so we are short on planks for the horn blower I think that will probably be ready first you encountered a small group of nomads looking for a new home we're doing okay for food and we need more people, so I would say yes, let's pick them up. They're all healthy, so that's brilliant. Okay, let's have a look at this. So the food quality, um, they're being more demanding. So the more of them there are, the more demanding they are. So maybe you don't want to put a kitchen in until they're demanding better food quality and it's causing them happiness issues. That's probably something to really bear in mind because if they're 100% happy for their population, then, so that's a little bit like uh, the mechanic in the, oh, what's that beaver game? Timberborn. Yeah, the mechanic in Timberborn where the bigger the population gets, the more things they need to keep them happy. So don't give them things if they're already happy without them, I would say. Uh, Ombu isn't very hungry yet, so uh, I'm going to open the research tree and just have a look and see what I want to do right now. Most of my stuff's all together. A food stand is for villagers in remote areas. So it's like a little mini pantry. Little mini pantry for like cooked foods and stuff for villagers that are like halfway across the map. Probably don't need that immediately. A warehouse is just a bigger place to store materials. Probably don't need that immediately. A dung collector, which would give us biogas and fertilizer. But we would then need a compost heap as well. And that's another two people involved in getting that. So I'm thinking that maybe um, starting to get things to help Ombu out would be good. I'm going to start with an Ombu Doctor. 
Then I'm going to go for cactus plantation and corn plantation. If we do have to move into, for any reason, a more arid or dry land, then that's going to be important. And talking about arid and dry lands, how are we doing for water? We're actually not doing very well. So, uh, let's see about making some more of those air things. Because we're in a normal humidity environment, so if we're already using up all of the water, then we need to produce more. Definitely. But can I squidge more in there? No, I can't. Oh, well. This is my water production area. So how about I pop another couple at the end? So we've got four. And then I, I can just increase the water storage then. And then if we need more than that, I'll have to find another area to put water in as well. I may pull it down to here. This is all water and kitchen. Trying to be like vaguely compartmentalized with it. I'm trying to keep things close to, to one another. Storage is close to buildings that, that require it. Storage is close to farms. And then close to the kitchen. And then the water that's needed for the farm to be kind of close by as well. There's a lot of things that need to be close by to each other. I don't really feel like these need to be particularly close to anything except for maybe a material storage. Not that we even really need to store that much because quite frankly <laughs> we're using it all so fast. We've got 11 herbs at the moment, that's brilliant. Yeah, because we're using water for the herbs and for the farm. That's probably why. So having these will be super useful. I'm running so low on stone though, but they haven't even... I could, I'm tossing up whether to build them a road down to here so, it takes, so that they don't take as long to run down there, but then also take some ages to build the road, so it's a bit of a catch-22, that one. Is my scavenger hut done? Yes, it is. Right, so scavenger hut under travel oh perfect I can just build it right there and that needs to be a priority because that is what's going to allow me to go out into the big wide world and get all of these like stones from the stone quarry and things like that so that's going to be much much better oh if this is cold then what's that is that even more cold? Was that cold plus toxic? It's like pink and pinker. Well, at least beets will still work. So how are they feeling now? They're still not happy with the food quality, so as soon as the kitchen is built, then they will be. Ombu is unsure about what path to take in an upcoming crossroads. Oh, I could have chosen that, and that would have given Ombu a sleep spot, which would have been really nice, but oh well. Need to keep more of an eye on that, don't I? But I can at least tell Ombu to run through some of these cold snaps, which will be quite nice. It'll say, this decision lies in your past. So basically, you missed it. You snooze, you lose. Okay, so with that, I actually believe it's time for the end of the episode. So we're going to save up here. So far, we played it a bit slow, but fairly safe. Um, they are doing really well generally for food despite the cold start which can be a, it can make things a bit trickier honestly and uh, and slower to to get started um, those two air wells are done now so hopefully the water should start to increase in these water tanks 
Um, so what we want ideally is a bit of water to be produced for the farms and everything, but also some to be stored. And I didn't feel that we were storing enough yet. And then I will probably, as these fill up, we'll slowly add one at a time in there. And then if we hit a hot area, we'll have like five, six hundred water, hopefully, to help us through. So there we are. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, the episode. I'm just going to pause it there so I can save it up in a second and, uh, and then probably record some more. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, then please do leave me a like below. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll let you know when the videos are out. I hope to see you next time. In the meantime, please look after yourselves and keep being awesome.